Hello, 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 how are you doing today? Thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Patience Hemingway, and I'm your encourager, your empowering friend. I am here to drop some nuggets so that you can feel empowered, so that you can go on and be that amazing person that you already are. Do you know why I am saying that? It's because sometimes we get in our heads and we wonder if we are enough. Yes, you are. I will repeat that again. You are enough. You are worthy and you are unstoppable. However, life happens and you sometimes feel overwhelmed and weighed down. And you go like, no, I'm not good enough. Look at this person. Then we start comparing ourselves to someone else. Have you ever done that before? I know I have. I'm a mom, sometimes I go like, oh my goodness, am I doing the right job? Am I a good mom? I am blessed with a spouse. I go like, oh my God, am I being a good spouse? I'm an employee. Like, oh my goodness, am I meeting up to the standard and the goals of my employer? And then you get to the kitchen and you wonder, oh my God, am I a good cook? Or you dr dress up and wear your fancy clothes and go like, oh, look at my big belly. Look at my legs. Look at my thighs. And you wonder, what are you doing? You are enough. You are perfect the way you are. So at this moment, whatever you're doing, I want you to pause, okay? Stand straight, foot open to your shoulder width and put your hand on your hips. Broaden your shoulders, chest out, and I want you to lift your head up straight, okay? And then I want you to give yourself a big, big smile. Smile at yourself. And if you want to laugh, give yourself a good laugh like that. <laughs> All right? I want you to do that. And while you're doing that, I want you to inhale. Fill up that big area in front of you. Fill up your chest. Hold it for a little while. And I want you to exhale slowly and gently. This is your moment. This is your me time. Don't worry or think about anything else. It's just you and your breath. Let's do it one more time. Inhale. Hmm, you are Wonder Woman. You are the feminine Superman, okay? Breathe it all in. Feel your shoulders relax. Feel your feet planted to the ground where you're standing. Yes, you are grounded right there. With that big smile, and I want you to exhale nice and slow. Wow, how did that feel? I feel so relaxed right now. Just taking that moment to calm myself down, to stay grounded, and to forget about everything else for just this moment. And guess what? You didn't need any machinery. You didn't need any special equipment to do this. All you needed was you just stopping for a moment and appreciating what is inside you, which is your breath. So welcome to today's show. We're going to talk about breathing and also how we can use that to empower ourselves. Before I move on, I want to read something from this book about women. I'm all about women, okay? So I'm going to talk to you about, read a portion of this book about Queen Esther. I don't know if you've heard about Queen Esther. She is in the history books, okay? So I'm going to read with you so you can hear what she did and how we can take one or two nuggets out of it and apply it to our lives. Are you ready? Let's go. So it says, Esther, more than a beauty queen. You are more than who you think you are. So let's see how it went for her. The story of Esther reminds women 
that our outward beauty is not the only or the most important characteristics we have been blessed to receive. Esther spent 12 months enhancing her physical appearance, and she clearly had it going on. She won the favor of the king over all the other young ladies who were being pampered and prepared to be queen. She was definitely beautiful. However, Esther's true beauty didn't come from her beauty. And it is not her beauty that has left a lasting impression in, in history. This beauty queen had to make a decision once she heard from her cousin Mordecai about a plan to destroy her people who lived throughout the empire. She had to approach the king and to ask to stop this plan. To revoke the edict he had been convinced to decree and to spare her people's lives. She had to be brave to approach the king. So she called for the people to fast. And we remember her famous words. And if I perish, I perish. Esther remembered her people and she was willing to sacrifice for the life, to sacrifice her life to save them. This is the end of the story, but here is the moral. Esther shows us that we are called to help others, regardless of our position. When we are influence, when we have influence in high places, we should use that influence to help those less fortunate than ourselves. We should use that influence to fight for justice rather than to merely gain a position to fight for, to, I'll take that again. We should use our influence to fight for justice rather than to merely gain a position that makes us look good. Esther reminds us that it's not all about how we look, it's about what we do. While we pour time and money into making sure we look good, let's make sure we do good, even when we have to take risk. Now here's the question. How have you used your influence to help others or help determine the outcome of a situation? That is the question for today. So now back to how we started. You might be beating yourself, putting yourself down, asking yourself a whole lot of questions, thinking that you are not enough. But I want to remind you that every situation that you have been through to get to where you currently are is enough to use those lessons to empower someone else. It could be someone as high as the president of your company or the town hall manager or the Whoever the person is, you don't have to only be an influence to your peers, but to the younger generation, to the ones that are coming up, to your colleagues, and also to people in higher authority. They could take a lesson from you. So now, what have you gone through? What have you experienced? What are the lessons that you can remember? Are you using that position to support others and pull them up so they don't fall into the same trap? Or are you using, are you covering your story up like, oh my goodness, I lost a child. I'm not going to tell anyone about it. It's a shame. It's a taboo to even talk about that. Is that who you are? Or is that what you're thinking to yourself that someone will laugh at you so you don't even want to share it? Or because now you are with the Joneses in the affluent area, so you don't look back to support those who you started with? No. Queen Esther, even though she was the queen of the whole empire, 
she took the risk of going to the king to decree, to ask that the decree will be turned over so her people do not die. Maybe let me go back a little bit to tell you what that means going to the king. In their time, you do not just go walk over into the king's palace just because he's your husband. You have to be invited. But with the issue at hand, she couldn't wait for an invitation at that time. She had to risk her life. And if you ever walk into the king's palace without being invited, you are risking your, literally you could be sentenced to death. That was what it was at the time. So she knew what she was about to do and she still did it because of the people, the poor people, her people, who were going to be eradicated, like killed. In this day and age that we in, what can you do to speak up for other people? Probably you are not Queen Esther. You do not have a king who has all the power so you can go tell him, wipe this off so there could be food for people to eat or there could be better schools or there could be shelter for homeless people. You cannot do all that. But there is something else you can do. Probably you can join support groups and share your story to support someone else so they don't feel alone. Or you can go volunteer and run for public offices so you can add your voice and your knowledge and your intelligence to the administration. Does that sound great? You can also make sure that you encourage others to register to vote on matters and policies that are important to you. So you see how powerful women are? In any little way, big or small, you are an influence. First of all, you influence yourself by the way you show up. That is why I told you, I reminded you to stand like this. <sighs> Remember you are super, okay? You are super. So fill that in and then influence your home where you are. Through the food you eat, the, the food you make for them or you purchase for them, let it be your own sphere of positive, safe space. Probably you didn't have that, but this is your time, it's your space, and it's your influence, okay? So use it positively. And in your community, you don't have to be the president or the, the council member to use your voice. Just the way you walk, you talk, you smile at people will let them feel that warmth and want to be like you or want to get closer to you so they can have that positiveness all around them. Sometimes you walk into the grocery store and you wonder, you see people's faces, you can see or sometimes perceive that they have a lot going on in their mind or they're even absent-minded whilst picking up stuff. Just your smile or complimenting them telling them how good they look or how nice their hair looks. Just say that. You will be lifting someone up without even knowing, okay? There are so many negativity going on. People pulling down each other every moment of the day. And probably they've had a long day and even wonder what they're going to do when they get home with these children, right? Your little smile, your word of encouragement, your... Um, Compliment will lift them up and let them know that, oh, somebody cares. Oh, somebody said this. They'll be sleeping and thinking about it without even you knowing what you did for them. So I challenge you that today, use your voice, use your power, use your influence. Stop beating yourself down. You are an important member of this ecosystem. You are an important member of this planet. That's why you were placed here. Do not ever put yourself down and squeeze yourself, make yourself insignificant. You are valuable. So I want you to always walk out that way, walk out that way and tell yourself that you believe in yourself and you are good. And what you see in yourself, share it with other people. We need you. You are mighty and you are a queen, not just because you're beautiful, but because of what you do. You use your mind, you use your spirit, and you are an important member of the community. We love you so much. So I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this show. If you picked up anything and you want to connect with me, 
please go ahead and email me at patientserenitygrove.com patientserenitygrove at gmail.com you can send me an email and let me know if you want to get any of my books you can go on amazon and grab my book the title of my first book is breathe with me do you get it breathe with me a guide to finding peace in the storms of life so whatever storm you're going through there are breath works in there 11 different poses that you can do to help you to stay grounded because listen the breath is one thing that was gifted to you and i when we arrived on this planet and we need to use it we have to use it more than we think we're using it we are underusing it. So go ahead and grab that book, share it with a friend, share it with your community, have a book club. I can come over and we can have a discussion, okay? I want to hear from you. So let's connect and have a great day. See you soon on the next episode. Have a great night. Bye-bye for now.